Hello everyone. Uh, this video is uh, meant to complement a presentation for the uh, European Geosciences Union uh, 2021 uh, in the session HS 1.1.2 on uh, novel observations uh, for hydrometry. Um, and I'm presenting here uh, a, a screencast of the Open River Cam dashboard, uh, a software that um, the Trans-African Hydrometeorological Observatory, together with Rainbow Sensing, have established to help practitioners to implement uh, observation sites for uh, river flow observations using only uh, cameras. Uh, so it's really meant uh, not so much for scientific purposes, but really for operational purposes. So a typical problem is that uh, that national hydromet agencies uh, all over the world have problems to maintain their rating curves. Well, if you have a camera on site that records every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes or every hour, uh, it is very difficult to miss an event. And uh, if you have the right way to process that data into a river flow uh, in a relatively simple and pain-free manner, uh, then that really opens doors to keep rating curves very much maintained and also, of course, to operationalize flow observations. So uh, for uh, any further information on how we uh, constructed the software, I refer to my uh, presentation HS 1.1.2. Okay, so I'm going to present uh, some features of the software, which is currently still in development. So that some of these features might change, especially the looks and feels. We're still uh, working on that. First of all, you need to uh, log in. So we, uh, we offer logins so that uh, different people um, can have different, uh, focus on different results. Maybe one person is responsible for one set of sites and another person for another set of sites. Or if you want to roll out the software yourself, um, and the software is free, it is open source, and you want to, uh, to serve it out to different users from different organizations, that is all possible uh, by providing different logins. Okay, so I'm going to log in now. Uh, here we're back at the dashboards, and now you see that there is a number of uh, buttons here in the menu available that we can go through. Uh, we also have links to the uh, documentation and links to the uh, to the, the the source code itself. Uh, so what I first wanted to show is um, how simple it is for a practitioner to um, take a movie from a fixed camera that is installed on a certain site, uh, bring it into the tool um, and analyze it for river flow. So I'm just going to go to the movies first and then I will show you some more information about the setup as well. Now in the movies view you can also already see that there is a number of movies available and now we're going to uh, create a new uh, movie object. We have to provide a configuration that the movie belongs to and the configuration always consists of a site, a certain location at which you have a camera, and of course a camera configuration for that site, which consists of a certain camera type, as well as the way it is pointed towards the streams, and where, where do you have ground control points in vision, um, and uh, also the position of the camera is very important. I'm also going to select a timestamp. Uh, imagine that, for instance, you as, a, as an observer, you want to change the position of the camera at some point, or you want to install a new camera on a new place on the same site, then you can have several camera configurations that also might belong to different uh, timestamps. Uh, and also the timestamp of the movie that you want to upload is very important, of course. So I'm going to upload a movie for, um, uh, for the uh, 27th of March, uh, 11.15. And I'm going to choose a movie file with that. So I'm going to browse to the place where I have those movies now. Uh, this is the right one. And I'm going to click Save. And now you can see there's a new movie here. Uh, movie status new. And we can start to uh, have a look at that, uh, at that movie. And you can see that one frame has been extracted, which allows you to, uh, to read out uh, the water level. And we can see here um, and we're still working on making this a little bit better visible, but uh, the water level is about uh, 1.18 as measured by the staff gauge. So let's fill that out, 1.18. And now I'm going to click Save. And you can now see here in the status of the movie that it is processing. So if I refresh this page, uh, at some point it will be done, and then you will see the movie status finished. 
and then you will also see that the discharge will pop out here so we have the median discharge here the tool also computes 5 25 75 and 95 percentiles and we're still we're still working on uh, visualization methods to make those visible as well but in a table that is um, it's going to be a bit uh, too much information uh, for this uh, moment so the processing is going to take a little bit of time so while this is running uh, i'm just going to go to uh, to uh, show you a little bit more of the the setup and the first thing uh, that you will see in the setup menu if you click on setup you'll have several options one of them being the uh, setup of sites so if i click on this um, you can see that uh, at this moment i have already made a number of sites throughout uh, the city of uh, Dar es Salaam so if I zoom out a little bit you can uh, see that a little bit more clearly so um, here's Africa uh, so we're here in Dar es Salaam um, and you might have a site here uh, on this uh, this uh, smaller stream, stream this is the Ntongombe River which is uh, which means the this is the local word for cow river um, at, at a certain bridge uh, you might also have uh, one over here which is the China River uh, and then the main river through the through the city of Dar es Salaam is the uh, Zimbazi uh, this would be a very nice spot to uh, to observe flows with cameras we don't do that at the moment by the way this is simply just for demonstration purposes to show you that if you're um, in charge of a number of uh, stations that you have to maintain and you have to maintain rating curves for it is very easy to set up um, multiple sites and make sure that movies that you take for those sites are attributed to the to those sites uh, and in fact the nice thing is that if we go to this site here which is on the chokiku river very close to senga road uh, if i click on this uh, point then you will actually go to the uh, filtered out movies for that specific site so it's really really simple for an observer to filter out the movies that belong to a certain site uh, one of those movies was in fact the movie I just uploaded and we can actually see it still processing here so we still have to uh, to wait uh, a little bit for uh, getting this uh, the results uh, shown here on the front page so for the moment let me go back to uh, the sites uh, and we might have to uh, uh, install, uh, you know, a new site perhaps um, along the Sinza River. Uh, we have a, a high school here, which is uh, very close uh, to the Sinza stream. So maybe we want to um, mount a camera on the side of the school and establish a, uh, a site there. So I'm going to click on cr Create and then zoom into that place uh, again but now in the create mode and I have to look a little bit so here's the Sinza here we have our high school so I'm just gonna click here this uh, this is an approximation of course it's not uh, very accurate and I'm gonna call it uh, perfect vision Sinza and now I'm gonna click save you can see that the uh, the projection that we need uh, for this site is automatically chosen. This is a uh, coordinate reference system. It's the uh, UTM uh, 37 South. If you would click on a site outside of Tanzania somewhere further east, you would uh, end up with uh, 36 South because you're uh, further further east. Um, so the the right UTM zone is automatically calculated. I'm going to click on save, and now you can see in the overview of sites that we have uh, not. Um, uh, seven sites but now we have eight sites this is our new site ID 10 and if I click on it uh, you will see that there are no items in the table simply because we don't have any movies uploaded for this site yet um, and in fact um, you need to uh, establish a camera configuration first for a given site before you can upload any movies for it and for that uh, we have another view which is the uh, camera configuration view uh, so let me quickly uh, show you that um, and I'm not going to do everything because that's going to take a, a, a little bit more time but just to give you an idea if we want to create a new uh, configuration we click on create and we select for which particular site and camera combination do we want to make a configuration now at this moment we only have one site in Dar es Salaam so I'm going to collect to, to click on that site which is this Chokiku Senga Road site 
and we have a Foscam, uh, Foscam uh, camera uh, there. So I'm going to choose that camera, and that camera has certain lens characteristics that you can also set in the tool. So for this camera configuration, uh, we can establish a start and end time. So imagine that at some point, maybe you have changed the position of the camera or you have replaced the camera for a new model. Then you might want to make a new camera configuration with a new start and end time and then upload movies for that particular camera configuration. So this makes it really easy for, a, uh, yeah, for an operational manager of sites uh, to, uh, to keep check of, uh, of different camera configuration, make sure that you select the right one. So let's assume that we have a camera that we're going to have there at least until somewhere in June 2021. So I've selected it now. And now I have to provide a short movie clip in which the control points are visible for which we want to do order rectification. So I have selected that movie now and I click save. And now it's, um, it's going to extract one frame uh, and lens correct it also. So the lens parameters are being corrected for. And here we have the first frame of, uh, of our movie shot. Uh, what's really important to note is that we have here a stick in the water. Here there's another stick, here's another stick, and there's another stick. And we ca can identify the locations of the control points of those sticks uh, simply by clicking on them. I'm going to do that now. This is one, two, three, and four. And then I can establish the red coordinate here. And you can see that here, red. Uh, this is still a, a, s a small uh, bug that we need to fix. This false has to be removed. But the red pixel, if you, you need to know where the, what the coordinates are of those pixels. And you can fill those out here in the X and Y coordinates. And at the moment, we, uh, we only support that you use the local coordinate reference system. So you have to use, in this case, 37 South UTM. But we're still working on also making it possible to, uh, to simply fill out latitude and longitude coordinates. Um, that's going to be uh, something we're going to release uh, later on. Um, you also need to supply the water level of the, uh, of the water at the moment that you took this movie. Uh, and that is going to be used to basically reference the water level as measured by the staff gauge to the water level that occurs uh, in the coordinate reference system you've selected. Now, uh, by doing that, and if you also take, and that is somewhere, somewhere further down the line, you also take the camera lens positions, then when the water moves closer to the camera lens, you can correct the position of the ground control points automatically. So you don't have to correct it, but the software does that for you by interpreting how much closer the water came to the lens. Um, so that is really a carefree uh, solution to uh, when you have a fixed uh, camera. So I'm not going to go through this process entirely, but the idea is once you have filled this out once, you also need to fill out a, uh, yeah, a, an area that you want to project every time by just simply clicking for coordinates. Um, once you click next, um, then you have a camera configura configuration done. And then you are in the position to do exactly what I did at the beginning of the movie. Simply upload movies continuously, uh, if you like. And we can even automate that at some point. Um, and, uh, and then just read the staff gauge water level and it's going to be processed for you. You can even do a batch simply by first uploading that batch. Then selecting for each point uh, the, the water level and click, uh, click, on, uh, yeah, click on save. And then it's going to be processed in a queue so you don't have to uh, sort of you know wait every time for a movie to be finished before you uh, click on the next movie uh, and insert the water level you can just do that in one go and then the process is processing is just going to be done upon availability of uh, pro a processing node okay so um, for now i'm just going to leave this uh, and i do think that uh, by now the uh, movie we just uploaded should be finished and yes it is finished uh, and you can see here that we have a, an estimated water level. Uh, okay, this is the water level you filled out, and an estimated mean median discharge of about 19 cubic meters per second. And of course, we want to see some details. Here we have the details of that. This is again the 
the uh, snapshot that we took from the first frame lens corrected snapshot and then down below we have the auto projected image so you can see that the uh, the forest here around uh, around our uh, visible area of the stream is uh, looks very much extruded simply because we're projecting it on the water level surface uh, of course the trees are above the water level surface so they're going to be they're going to be looking very much extruded just like the staff gauge here um, but what we also see is that we have a very nice uh, set of uh, velocity uh, vectors um, of course uh, we use the open piv library which is a, a very nice open source library for this purpose uh, it estimates velocities all over the place or even in the vegetation and we have a lot of temporal and spatial filters to make sure that uh, uh, that uh, velocity vectors from frame to frame and from place to place that are uh, very unlikely uh, are filtered out uh, uh, quite uh, severely so the ones that are left over are actually quite trustworthy velocity vectors okay then the final thing I wanted to show is uh, the rating curve view so um, let's go back to the movies list view so we have in this case we have seven well to be frank only six because this is a duplicate of the new one I had here this one was already treated so basically we have six rating points available wh from which we can build a QH relationship so let me click those six videos and then with those selected points I'm gonna make a rating curve and here we have it this is our six point based rating curve uh, and in fact if you think well maybe this is an outlier uh, I don't really trust it uh, you can do two things you can in fact click on this link here to inspect it and a new um, tab will open open up that allows you to really inspect those points and see if you uh, if you like them or not and if for some reason you think well this is probably not a very good result I should not include this in the rating curve you can on the fly click on the point it will become gray and also the fit of the rating curve will be re-established based on the leftover points so if I click it again you can see that the the, the rating curve the gray line is going to be pushed towards that point simply because that is the, the least squares fit if I click it again it's going to be uh, more uh, moving towards the the remaining five points obviously okay um, I think this is uh, this about this is about uh, what I think is uh, useful to show. Um, I just wanted to uh, show one last thing, maybe that um, if you go to this uh, question mark link, then you go to a new tab where you can also see our documentation. This is still work in progress, and here you can find a, a quick start with some sample videos, and uh, also uh, at the bottom you have a site survey manual which is very useful to know what to survey and why to survey it which is for practitioners also of course very important if you're not familiar too much with these camera based uh, observation methods so with this i'd like to thank you for uh, listening in and uh, uh, have fun with the rest of the uh, egu uh, uh, virtual presentations thanks very much